notice how things have become very unfunny. Uh, notice how Hollywood has become unfunny. Notice how all the late shows have become very unfunny. Because when you start shutting down speech like that, that's the ultimate uh, you know, result of all of this. So uh, the, the left, the totalitarian left that's f uh, shutting down free speech in Hollywood and elsewhere is a very unfunny group. And, um, and, and this is where I think there's hope. Because I genuinely think that people like to laugh. Sometimes filmmakers predict the future, but it's not science fiction, it's, well, political fact. Justin Folk, the director of No Safe Spaces, which about a year, year and a half ago, you managed to predict exactly what 2020 was. Uh, quick, quick thought, No Safe Spaces, why did you do this, this story? With everything happening on, around college campuses, uh, we just felt it was a, a pretty important story to tell because we, what we saw happening, we were seeing the future take place. We were seeing uh, the people that were causing the troubles on these campuses, canceling speakers, uh, doing all this stuff, were going to go out into the world and um, they were going to run you know, companies, they're going to be part of uh, social media companies. And, and so we saw this coming. We saw what's possible. The, can the cancel culture at, as it was starting to flare. So Ann Coulter is a friend of mine, and I've uh, uh, seen her shouted down at college campus after college campus. And these are the places where you're supposed to go for free speech, where you're supposed to have these ideas, uh, where we're supposed to celebrate diversity and tolerance. I know because I've seen it on the campus walls that that's what they you know, celebrate. It's, it's not the case. What was amazing about the film was not only did you get Dennis Prager, one of the greatest on, on getting the intellectual side of this, but you got Adam Carolla, who, who I would imagine was taking a real risk talking to you about political correctness, given how politically correct his industry is. Yeah, you know, I, I think that's true. I think Adam's a bold guy, and he's built on his, his career on being bold and not being afraid. He refers to his podcast as the pirate ship. Uh, because he you know, says no one can take it down. They're there to do what they're going to do, and no one can say otherwise. Uh, Adam was kind of the perfect guy for this film and, and, uh, in combination with Dennis, the two of them as a duo, because, and this is, I, I, I'm taking this from Adam, but he, he always described his relationship with Dennis as uh, when your dog is sick and you need to give him some medicine, uh, you got to give him a pill, but a dog won't just eat a pill. You have to kind of wrap it up in some hamburger meat and feed the dog the pill. And Dennis Prager is the pill, <laughs> and Adam Carolla is the hamburger meat. So Adam brings the comedy. He he he's very insightful. Uh, Dennis, obviously, he's just a sage, uh, wise man that can just kind of uh, frame any subject. So the two of them working together uh, was something we were really excited about, and they happen to be good buddies. And when you get them together. It's just dynamic. We would do. Uh, we did live shows all around the country when we were making this movie. We did a tour, and they would just get up for an hour and a half on stage and uh, unscripted, be able to entertain twelve thousand people just just talking about you know whatever topics they wanted to talk about. It's pretty amazing. But there's, I've mentioned to, to you before. I grew up with the ACLU and other great. Liberal saying, uh, "I defend to your death the right, your right to say it." I, I heard, uh, you know, Hill Street Blues preach, "You're innocent until proven guilty. The ends don't justify the means." Those kind of liberals are gone. Those true civil libertarians are gone now. It seems the right that does that, and Hollywood, especially, if you cross the line. You're out of a job, which is amazing to me that you were able to get Adam Carolla and Tim Allen to sit down and talk with you about the cancel culture before we saw it explode last year. Yeah, and I, I'm amazed that more people in Hollywood don't see this as a slippery slope that can come for them. And we make the point in the movie, uh, if you think that this can't come for you, you're wrong. It's, it's coming. And uh, it doesn't end. It's a snake that eats its own tail. And, you know, for people in Hollywood to think, oh, okay, I'm good if I just say the right things or, or you know, do the right things and think that there isn't, you know, because it's just one thing, just one time and you're out, you're gone. And um, so I'm kind of amazed that a lot of people in Hollywood don't, don't see that more and that they're not just more in support of free speech. Well, and, and how they celebrate, uh, you know, Hollywood, you know, they are so 
busy smelling each other's flatulence and into <laughs> how great Hollywood is that they put out these great movies like Trumbo and, and yeah. others that talk about how awful it was to have McCarthy trying right. to stifle free speech and ruining their lives. How can they celebrate you know, that spirit? At the same time, they are now the McCarthyites. They are destroying right. people's lives and livelihoods. Right. And now we saw a whole year of, uh, of, of clashes of people shutting down people. You call you, we'll call you a racist, and that's yeah. it. You're labeled. You're gone. Well, you'll notice one thing. You'll notice, notice how things have become very unfunny. Uh, notice how Hollywood has become unfunny. Notice how all the late shows have become very unfunny. Because when you start shutting down speech like that, that's the ultimate uh, you know, result of all of this. So... Uh, the, the left, the totalitarian left that's f uh, shutting down free speech in Hollywood and elsewhere is a very unfunny group. And, um, and, and this is where I think there's hope because I genuinely think that people like to laugh. I think people like to, to I think people like humor. Um, and no, also no, humor. No, nothing, <laughs> nothing is funny. I mean, could, yeah. you, could you imagine Don Rickles trying to get his career in Hollywood today? Have you listened to some of his jokes recently, by the way? I mean, they're incredible. First of yeah. all, you like if he said that now, unbelievable. I, I saw But that. also, he loved everybody he was yeah. ripping. Right. You know, he, he would be doing all these jokes that were insulting black people right. left and right, but he'd always be doing them at some... Right. NAACP benefit, you right. know, it's just, right. it, it was, yeah. uh, you can't do that. I, I wonder if comedy today, the Bill Burrs today, might be the ones that turn out to be the real civil libertarians. And that those of us on the libertarian right are the ones saying, you know, they, they have a right to say these things. You can't destroy them. And if you feel that way in, in Hollywood, Imagine what you feel like in the Dilbert world of living in some large corporation and you've got to keep your job, but every week you've got to go to another sensitivity class to tell you what you can't say. Right. I think, I think the guys like Bill Burr and Dave Chappelle are the ones that are boldly leading the way for the rest of us. I think they're the ones. Comedians have always been on that sort of cutting edge of speaking truth to power. And, uh, and we need it because, I mean, humor plays a, just a huge role in democracy because if you can't make fun of these people, um, or certain people, you know, all people, not just Trump. I mean, orange man bad. I mean, you can make fun of that all day. But if you can't make fun of people in power, then the, the democracy dies. I saw a TikTok video, and it's amazing how creative a lot of these kids are. So this young 18-year-old girl, she's half black, and she calls herself a half black conservative or something like that. She did this whole routine about how you can't say, if you do anything, you're a racist. And then she said, if... You want to know who's in power. Just ask who you can't criticize. Right. And right now, you cannot criticize so many groups. You cannot say so many things because there's a power structure and your life will be ruined. I mean, ruined. Right. It is amazing. Tell me really quickly. You made your living in Hollywood. Correct. And yep. somehow you escaped <laughs> How? Why? I found it just a hatch door. I was able yeah, to, right. to, it was a, a moving car right, and I right. just opened the door and rolled out. But, um, no, you, made I, your, you made your movie in films, a lot of films yep. we've all seen and talked about. You were on the production teams. Um, why switch over to doing something like this and trying to tell a different ideological story? I just felt it was important to, to bring the certain level of production value and storytelling to the war of ideas. Um, I love this country. I love the founding. I love the idea of America. And uh, it's been underserved by our side for quite some time. And so I just felt I had something to lend. Uh, What's you know, our side? Our side of the, the freedom lovers, the people that, that stand by the founders and what they believed and, and want to treat, keep those traditions going. And at least today, we are terrible storytellers. The left are great storytellers. Right. And it used to be the other way around. Hollywood used to tell these incredible stories about uh, individual risk and reward and what people would, would do for freedom. And now, you know, every villain is an oil entrepreneur. Right. Even the right. latest Muppet movie, you know, the, the right. bad guy was Tex Richmond, oil billionaire. Right. You know, it's just, oh, give me a break. You get tired of it. Um, you're, you're working on another project as well, or just finished it about, about the debate. Yeah. Which, which at first glance doesn't look like this, but it, but it is. Well, it's a historical documentary. Uh, it's called Right Makes Might, the story of the Lincoln-Douglas debates of 1858. And it's actually on Fox Nation right now. You can watch it on Fox Nation. 
But we made that film. It's just simply a retelling of, of that uh, historical moment, which basically gave us Lincoln uh, before the Lincoln-Douglas debates, uh, which was in the Senate race of, of 1858 in Illinois. Uh, Lincoln was a nobody. Nobody really knew who he was. And it was in those debates that he got his arguments out there to, to his ideas. He put them forth that basically later won him the, the nomination for the Republican ticket for president. Um, but what's interesting about that story is a lot of the arguments that were made by Stephen Douglas, his opponent, are some of the same arguments that the woke left is using today. Like what? Uh, like the founders didn't mean or they didn't intend what they said in the Declaration of Independence. Like that was all, you know, if they, if they meant that they would have lived it that way, you know, if they, you know, that those documents don't hold true. Um, instead, you have the 1619 Project, which is te telling people that uh, America was not founded in 1776. It was founded in 1619 when the first slaves arrived. So there's this other narrative that's being pushed right now. Um, and by the way, you're going to see this. Uh, you know, the, the author of the 1619 Project just got signed by a major talent agency in Hollywood. Oprah Winfrey is going to produce the movie. So this oh, stuff is God. coming, and everybody needs to be aware of it. So Please shove more of it down our throats because that's what makes it. Well, yeah. I, I know that you know, when you put together um, No Safe Spaces, you got a lot of really huge monetary offers. I mean, Netflix Netflix was beating down the door because yeah. they, they wanted this. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I know Prime uh, from Amazon did. So tell me about, about Netflix. Um, you told me that they well, just... Well, Net Netflix is why I was able to park my helicopter out in the uh, parking <laughs> lot there. Uh, no, Netflix is an interesting story. They, they are doing things purely from an ideological standpoint now. Um, by the way, I'm sure all your audience knows that you were kidding when what you were just <laughs> saying. Uh, but yeah, Netflix didn't even want to entertain our film at all. Didn't even want to give us a low ball. Didn't even say, hey, we'll put it up for free. Uh, whereas they had just given a documentary on AOC $10 million uh, to show that film. So if that doesn't kind of speak volumes right there. And by the way, our, our movie had at the time had made about one point. $3 million at the box office. That's incredible. The documentary on ASC hadn't, right. hadn't done $1. So If you want it, go to nosafespaces.com. Check it out and Amazon as well. Justin, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, John. We'll do it again. Yeah, thank you. If you enjoyed that conversation, by all means, click one of these other great programs. We have the best conversations with the most fascinating Coloradans. And subscribe to our channel. Just click down below and hit that little bell button too. You don't want to miss a single show.